right, so last week you guys were arrested uh, for crimes you did not commit, but did commit. Uh, you know, being arrested for murder and other things, but uh, being dismissed after a interrogation and investigation via magical means to find out that you actually were not cold-hearted murderers, just murderers to protect the city, which is somewhat more acceptable, but you didn't go through the right channels, so they are giving you a job to redeem yourself and paying you, so you all have a job now here in Seaport and will be making money as well as redeeming yourselves by doing community service. Well, there goes my unemployment. There goes your unemployment. So, you all had an interesting night with that. Um, if I recall correctly, one of you wandered off and had some fun in the crypts for a little while. Was, but was shy. And then you all have met up in the morning on the appropriate tiny little ship, reminiscent of the very first ship you see oh, Captain now? Jack Sparrow on in Pirates That's of the good. Caribbean. Very tiny thing. But not underwater yet. Um, where you guys will be sailing around to either go to Z Camp or C Camp. I think it's C. I can't recall the name now. One of the two Goblin Villages. You have yet to decide which one you wanted to go to, though. But whichever one. Hmm? Whichever one's closer. Okay. I agree with that. One of them is closer. Define, define closer. The closer one to the village is actually further away by ship. The uh, beach, we're taking the ship anyway. Whichever one's going to be closest to our drop-off point on the uh, beach. Okay. So you will go to Z Camp first. So, the... Actually, would either of them give us a... Not a tactical advantage, but at least a scouting advantage? Like, are we going to land right on their beach if we land there? Z Camp, or... you definitely will. It's a very narrow canyon. Um, this is actually... As you guys sail around... You'll have a chance to talk to the people, but I'll give you a brief description of this first. The It's a narrow canyon with high walls, and you can see up on the sides of the hill, really poorly made, but towers, watchtowers basically, made by goblins, obviously, with some goblins in it. They can see the entire valley very easily, and there is no point you can land on in there without circumventing a mountain to approach stealthily. But they do have a dock, though, again, crudely built, that you could go right up to. That's the first thing really you guys will see. Do we really want to pull right up to them? <laughs> I'm going with no. Yeah. Especially if stuff goes south, they know where our ship's at, and they can screw our ship up before we even get back to it. Yeah, what about the uh, Y, the other one? Why can't um, the Y can't? It's much larger. Uh, larger. It takes a little bit longer to get to it. Another hour and a half of sailing, mostly because it is such a tiny ship. But he gets is this around right here, uh, right in that area. Yes, their camp is actually right up here along the coast, and there is a lot of areas to the south that you could dock in what appears to be kind of a forest, but more like a desert forest. A dry forest, if that makes sense. They're smaller trees. Smaller, wiry looking trees. Nothing large or climbable. So, kind of more shrubbish? Um, more shrubbish rather than tree ish, but they are technically trees. Okay. For those of you that have been there very much Catalina style, with some of those squirrely little trees. Well, that's good with not landing right into a uh, place that we're planning on diplomatically uh, dealing with. Yeah, so why camp we thinking? Yeah. Oh, that sounds, sounds good. good to me too. The guard Out of curiosity, because I remember them saying something. Which one seemed to have the best? Uh, uh, chances of having what we were looking for. Y Camp is the one that they actually were pretty sure was the one that took it as it is closer and could get in there quicker during the chaos. Okay, then yeah, I'm voting. Right. 
So you'll find a spot uh, to the south where there is a location where you can pull up to. The captain and his two crew will be looking around and will eventually find something, a nice little cove they can pull into and drop anchor. Uh, it's only a short wade to the shore from there, so you will get a little wet getting in, but about 50, <laughs> 50 60 feet of walking through the seawater to get there. It's very mild here. No, uh, It's a sheltered cove more so. The cove is this one specifically right here. There's no massive waves rolling in or anything like that, so you're able to get in. It is far enough away with enough in between you guys that you are 99% sure the goblins will not be able to see the mass of the ship or anything. Okay. However, it does mean you will have approximately a mile hike. Well, it's only a mile. Not that bad at it's all. Not bad. It's not what time is it right now? At this point, it'll be about 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. Did, you guys did got really get his early copy? What? Wait, did no, Saxon you guys, you guys slept in really late, didn't you? No, this yeah, will be we getting towards like noon. This will be getting to the evening. This will be about 4 or 5 in the evening, actually, at this point. I forgot you guys. No, were... you said it was in the morning, so we. <laughs> Would you rather have the dark uh, darkness as an advantage? I was trying to take that away from you. No, I'd rather have the darkness as an advantage. I'm just telling you that time travel sounds like it'd be even more fun. <laughs> you know, time travel is something possible to happen in this. Even if it's midday right now, what, what would be... Are we, are we actually going to try to diplomatically do this? Is, is that even an option with you guys? Uh, like probably not. <laughs> okay, can we can we take like a half mile trek up the hills and come downward, get a better angle perspective, yeah. an aerial view of this place. Yeah, you can easily uh, walk yeah. up a little bit. The hill is up a little bit away, so you'll go from yeah. where you we are. We got there the high ground <laughs> to right there. It's about a half a mile, like you said, getting up into the area there, and you'll be able to see a lot better into the camp, the go goblin village from there. Although it is still about a half a mile away, you have a good enough vantage to see at least houses and a few things moving around. Although you won't be able to get an exact count of anything here. Okay. Give me a perception check from that area for those of you that are keenly sighted. Perception. see everything. Who was it that rolled first, sir? I did. Oh. Yeah, my name should have been All right. Well, Thorn, you get up there and you you look over and you start pointing out some things over there to everybody else pretty quickly. Like you can see very well. In fact, this is actually very close, only a little bit away, maybe about four hundred yards away from where you lived a lot as a child. So you know this area very very well. You can see the goblin camp from where you are. Uh, exceptionally well. It is larger than last time you saw it. There is approximately 30 huts total. And you will notice, though, something a little odd. There was a, a coastal cave over there. You can see a little bit of smoke coming out of the coastal cave. Something that you've never seen before. As for the rest of you, Gruck, you're having trouble keeping your footing right now. It's a little bit of loose stone, so you're not really paying attention to what's out there. Everybody else will be able to at least see the village and Yananoli and Saxon. You two will be able to see the number of villages as well as uh, once he pointed out the smoke. How far away, oh, I guess, is that? Also, uh, four guard, four, you can see four guard towers. Uh, each point of this uh, area. And one very crudely built what looks like an overhang above the coastal uh, uh, cave. Uh, the cave like where to the north of the town? Hmm? Where's the cave at? Is it to the north of the village or to the south? To the north. <laughs> like earshot from the village or... Very much earshot. They call it a coast coastal cave because at the highest high tides 
the floor of it does become very flooded. But for the most part, that only happens uh, on a very rare occasion, about once a month. So it is fairly dry most of the time, although the deeper areas could be dry or could always be submerged, depending on how it goes. Hmm. The coastal, the, it, it's basically, the mountain comes all the way down. It's basically right about here, and their village is technically right here. So, it's about a quarter mile, a little less, from the village. So, do we want to try to go to the cave, or do we want to try to do the village? I think we should check out the cave, because I've never seen it before. It's, okay. Uh, if you think it's far enough away that we can get there and kind of do our thing without the rest of the village noticing, then yeah, let's give it a shot. It's reasonable to uh, think they might have the item stashed in there. True. They may be trying to keep it out of the village. If, uh, yeah, if they're trying to still keep good relations. Yeah, how, how long would it take us to uh, kind of trek all the way around? Trekking around with uh, Tom or with Thorn as a guide isn't actually quite as bad. It'll take about a mile to get around, but he knows paths where you can cut it off pretty easily, fl uh, climbing where you won't be seen. I mean, there'll still be stealth checks for a por uh, portion of it, but he can get you there fairly quickly in the most smooth way possible. All right, guys. Oh, I'll right. Go there. You want to do right. this? I'll follow you there, Thorn. All right, let's roll up there then. Let's go check out this cave. Should we do stealth checks now? Uh, as you get in closer to the village, you definitely will want to. Is there anything oh. anybody wants to do before they roll stealth checks? <laughs> God, maybe I should stay behind. Uh. <laughs> Alright, so stealths. Ugh. Well, at least I didn't roll the worst one. Uh-huh. Ah! Uh, I'll, I'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't had a good stealth roll yet. I don't think I'm ever gonna. Yep. Oh, man. So the only one that's actually being stealthy is Thorn. And he's just like... <laughs> Guys, gotta be quiet. <laughs> the rest of us are like, you gotta be Grugs. Yeah! We do! <laughs> Grux, you say, guys gotta be quiet, and that's when a rock slips out from Grux's foot. He falls over, clank, clank, clank. The rocks are tumbling down the hill, making all kinds of noise. You are positive it was heard. All right, so that's a diplomatic approach. Uh, what do we think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to go talk to them, Grok. <laughs> well, do I know any places nearby that we could hide if anybody's coming to check on us? Give me a knowledge know nature that? check. Roll what? Ad knowledge nature at advantage because this is near your, uh, this is your home, basically. There is. There is a, a little area up, a, up just over the ridge from where you are where there is a lot of dead trees, dead firewood that's been dampened. Uh, the only problem is it is also a place where snakes tend to crawl around a lot. So if you want to take the risk. They're just snakes, guys. I know a place we can hide. <laughs> like All what right. kind of snakes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what kind of snakes are they? Little ones? Big ones? Uh, usually little, mid-size. Only about half of the ones on the island are poisonous. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not sure. really much for hiding in a cobra den. <laughs> More like vipers. Okay, yeah, that still sounds kind of stupid. Maybe we should go to the village first. <laughs> You're, you and this mountain thing is not working out too well. I was really hoping you'd go in there and, like, fight a bunch of you know, venomous snakes. That'd be kind of fun, too. <laughs> a hive of venomous snakes. That's just kind of a scary thought. 
So, uh, give me perception checks. As you guys are trying to decide what to do very quickly. Uh oh. Jan and, Jan and Oli and Saxon. You, everybody's talking, you guys glance down, and you see a group of about six goblins walking up. They have spears and shields, but they're using the spears as like a walking pole, uh, walking stick as they're approaching you all. How many do we see? Six of them. Six. We can take them. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. They're not coming to attack yet. I mean, they got their shields held, but yeah, they're not, they don't, they're not looking defensive or offensive at the moment. That Maybe we should try the yeah. diplomatic thing. Try. I said try. How far away are they? Way we could say we try. Oh, uh, they are about a hundred yards away, coming up the hill. They got tiny little legs, so it takes a little bit to get up the hill. I see. We just stand out here for a little bit, let them come to us, and start yelling at them when they get about I don't know, 30, 40 yards from us. You guys say tire them out a little bit? Try your diplomatic approach? I didn't say my diplomatic approach. <laughs> I said a diplomatic approach. Alright. I'm scared to know what your diplomatic approach would be. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> so. Well, can, can I kind of step back and hide a little bit in the brush? You can attempt it, yes. They're looking at you guys, so it'll be a little difficult, but it is possible. And a wave. Uh, I don't even know what I gotta roll for that, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> Stealth? It'll make it funny either way. Oh, actually, you're just like... <laughs> down. Not a problem. I'm laying you step down. Back, in the you lay down. You have a very good vantage point where you can see them, they can't see you, because you're looking at their feet. Well, kind of their eyes as they're coming up. But they, they're looking more at Gruck and Vol, who are standing very tall and intimidating. They'll, they'll, just pretend, pretend you're a tree. They'll get about 30 yards away, <laughs> where they'll, they'll, they'll take a couple more steps, and they'll start stepping like one foot in front of the other, and they have the shield raised, but they're, the spear's still back. They're being defensive. And they'll... Does anybody speak Goblin, first off? No, nope. I do not. I do not. No. Ah, uh, crap! I left my sheets in is the it, other room. Be right back. Is it uh, is it possible that the goblins would speak orc? It's possible. We'll find out in a moment. It's all Greek to me. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait for him to get back before I start chattering away. Yep. No, I do not. Uh, I want one. <laughs> the one in the middle will go. No goblin speak. No. And they they can't. They're they're slowly approaching still. Uh, very defensively. What you doing? What, 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 why are you here? Take it away, storyteller. <laughs> why are you here? Man, I've been awake for 20 minutes. Well, then it should be good. <clears throat> uh, Tell well, the story why we're here. <laughs> just in case you forget. And, I, well, I don't know. Let me whisper it to you because I don't want to say it aloud. Because it's not a comment that my character wants to make. Okay. Go ahead, Face. Take it away. <laughs> what did you call me? Face. <laughs> you're the highest, very nice. You're the highest charisma in the party. And haven't you seen A-Team? Face is awesome. Yeah. Uh, hiking, what are you doing here? <laughs> he looks and points with the spear back at the goblin camp. Home? 
looks very confused. No, that's not where we live. That's where I live. <laughs> what are you doing in me home? He's like I'm pointing the spear at you now. Am I? He, he's obviously not being a threat, but he's like pointing the spear. At you. <laughs> Old lady with her cane type thing. Clearly, I'm not at your house, am I? Taps the ground. Goblin land. I didn't see a sign. <laughs> he points up way behind you on the hill. Way, way behind you. Like, towards the city. You guys wouldn't go anywhere near this. You'll see a stake with a skull on top. It's an animal skull, not a human skull. Sign! <laughs> okay, since I know this area, do I not have any, like, plants that are known only in this area? Do I know anything that's hmm. to this area specific? Um, well, some of the trees are more specific to this area that you're down here True. for. Some of the ironwoods. Anything that would have, like, berries or medicine or... The roots from the uh, ironwood actually is, uh, could be... Considered medicinal in some ways, uh, it, it's an, uh, considered a male aphrodisiac by some races. All right. Well, then Why? I tell them that we're here to retrieve some of these roots. Okay, but you have to get permission from the chief. Talk him. <laughs> hmm. Follow. Come on. Right. Follow. Let's go talk to him. All right. <laughs> They're just waving at the shield and they start walking downhill. Follow. Actually, no. Can we just like, be like, all right, never mind then? We'll just leave. No, no. Let's fucking do this thing. All right. All right. We'll go talk to him. <laughs> Where's the is better place to he... attack from is... except for the center? I mean, seriously. Cleave, 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 cleave. You guys have yep. AoE spells, right? Totally. You're right. We're gonna go. If we're gonna do it. We're gonna go hardcore on it. Is John and Oli still laying down? I'm just like chilling in a bush right now, <laughs> deciding whether or not I'm just gonna take a swing at somebody. <laughs> well, Saxon's talking about heading down there <laughs> and getting ready to follow the goblins. Follow! Come on! Come! Come I'll, on! I'll step in line right behind uh, Saxon. Actually, I should be in front of Saxon, but I don't think that matters right now. I'll take the rear. That's right, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Yada Noli's still laying down, though. <laughs> All right, yeah, then I'll still stand up and start nonchalantly strolling over. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> oh, the, yeah, the roots, something collecting. Yeah. <laughs> One of the goblins almost pissed himself. <laughs> when you stand up. <laughs> Where's he? Roots. <laughs> Wrong plant! Tells you that. Oh. Well, thanks. Which one are we looking for? <laughs> he points at one of the ironwoods. Ah. Uh, Chief first. Chief's. Biss. Chief Biss. Yeah. What's your chief's name? Piss! Like piss? Bee! Bitch? Like a bumblebee! Piss! Piss. B I S. B I S S. Home? Follow! Right. Come on! They'll lead you guys down. Uh, most of the huts, as you guys are approaching the village, you realize are about the height of, or very much shorter than, the orcs and vol. <laughs> so. <clears throat> hey, guys. Like Yoda's house. <laughs> this is totally doesn't have anything to do with anything, but Friday, July 14th, so this coming Friday, uh, is apparently Krispy Kreme celebrating its birthday, and they're discounting glazed donuts to 80 cents for a dozen. Holy shit. Dude, it's going to be worth going to North County for that. Is there a limit on how many dozen? I don't know. 
I feel bad. All I did was get a link <laughs> to a new story that I haven't read yet. I, I have Friday off. All I'm telling you is the title of the story. Krispy Kreme is celebrating its 80th anniversary, Friday, July 14th, with a dozen glazed, with a dozen original glazed donuts for 80 cents. Get to now. Time to get diabetes. So somebody should uh, go to a like party store and buy a bunch of fake mustaches in case it's only one per person. <laughs> <laughs> And it was nice knowing you guys. I will be in a coma next week. Yeah. <laughs> it's said time to get diabetes. All right. So, so I, I, I whispered to the guys, are, are we really going into the middle of this place? Is, is, this, is, this, is this happening? How many, how many goblins do we see as we're walking in? Men? Women? They, they, that looked like they could wield a weapon. Yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the male goblin and the female goblin. Um... The boobies is about it. And they're very saggy. Hey. But that's a whole other thing that you don't want to focus on. The number of them that can carry weapons, so you're guessing is probably close to 40. As you're 40? coming in. 40. Yes. Okay. Hey, Matt? Yes. Is there like a knowledge check that I could do to just know everything about goblins? <laughs> or find out. Find out what exactly my character knows about goblins so that I don't accidentally metagame something. Uh, give me knowledge history. Yeah, can I do the same thing since I lived around these guys? Absolutely, it'd be history as well. Yeah, you will know the history. absolute basics of the goblins. Do I get an advantage? No. Uh, you, you no? probably did not deal with them very often. You, however, know quite a bit more about them. Okay. Uh, a lot of their... Some of the intricacies... Uh, their eating habits, stuff like that, which is, by the way, raw meat. Um, Saxon, though, your your knowledge basically is going to be limited to basic common knowledge. You won't know some of the ins and outs of social etiquette in the goblin camp. I will or will not? Will not. Okay. You do know that they are... Curious creatures that tend towards violence and theft. So. All right, On the plus will... side, it shouldn't be hard to provoke them. No. So they I will lead that's... you into the center of the village. It's a very large open area with what appears to be a very large fire pit that is currently completely empty. There is on one side of this pit, with the chair facing the ocean, so you have to actually walk around it and come in front, a very, very large chair that you're pretty sure could sit a troll. And on this chair, which has about eight steps to get up to the top of it, is one goblin who is not much bigger than the rest of the other goblins. He, he stands maybe three and a half foot tall, and is sitting there cross-legged. <laughs> A little bit older. You can see he's a little bit more worn. His hair is starting to gray a little bit. Still has a little bit of... Uh, he has some battle scars and some some type of skin condition on his face is causing almost like a wart conditioning thing on there. He's also a little more plump than the rest of the goblins here. Obviously eating better than the rest. And he looks at you. What are you doing in my village? Well, that guy brought us. <laughs> and a, and he, he hangs his head and nods and walks off. So what are you doing on my land? Are you here to pay tribute? Is that a thing we should say yes to? <laughs> <laughs> You're the talkie talky guy. I don't know dick roll about goblins. Nobody took me to school. Are we inside a room? Like a, th a throne room, you said? No, it's more like... It's a, uh, a courtyard, basically. The center of the city. Completely open air. It's dirt ground. It's very primitive.
we were just collecting some roots, and your buddy here told us uh, we should come talk to you about them. Oh. We could collect these. Yes, yes. Well, then, then, then we can uh, work out a, uh, some deal. I'm sure we can work out a deal. You bring tribute. You can take roots. I think this is fair. You want some roots? Oh, got those. I want something we can't get here. Like what? Shinies. What? Shinies. <laughs> you want I, shinies? I want shinies. Bits of gold, sparks, gems, silvers. Shinies. What kind of shinies do you got so we don't get you the same ones? Mm, not very many shinies right now. So I'll take any. Any shinies. Alright. What, what do you guys think? Hey, Matt. Hmm. What exactly are the items we're looking for? Uh, there is a sword, a gem encrusted sword that is extremely, extremely shiny. Not battle worthy though. It is purely an art piece. A tiara that is extremely potently magical, and I don't recall what the third item was now. Was the tiara shiny? The tiara is very shiny. So those must be his few did shinies. It, did anybody write down what? Uh, uh, I think I did on the other paper. I, mean, I just remember the tiara and the sword. That's what I recall too. I wasn't here, so I don't know. I don't even know why we're here, if I'm going to be honest. You're working for the city, getting items. Collecting items? Yeah, and, well, uh, there was a bunch of items stolen by some goblins, and you need to find them because the really rich people that own them want them back. And any other items you guys find, if they are unclaimed, are yours. It said a tiara, a sword, and a book. Oh, that's right, a spell book. Okay. Yes. Are goblins the kind of uh, peoples that would, like, display their shinies, or do they like to hoard them and... He's got several necklaces on, obviously. Um, most of them appear to be made out of glass, but he is very much trying to display any he has. Are they willing to trade their shinies? For other shinies? Yes. We trade shinies for shinies. We trade shinies for a lot of things. We trade shinies for for weapons. We trade shinies for food. We trade shinies for rain. We tr we trade shinies for protection. It, 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 just whispering to our guys, it doesn't really seem like this guy's got the shinies we uh, were sent to, to look for. Uh, you, you think there's a possibility these guys don't have it? Hold on one second. It's a possibility. Chloe, mommy's not but in here. The we really need to off. I'm sorry. confirm before we just leave, you know? Hey, you can go talk to mommy. Maybe mommy what? can put one on downstairs for you, okay? I'm not putting the TV back on, sweetheart. I'm sorry. How easy do you think it'd be to uh, convince them to uh, help us look at the other goblin peoples for their shinies? Do goblins like fighting other goblins for shinies? Typically, yes. That is pretty much common knowledge on that one. And also, give me, uh, for those of you that are more, um, I want to say diplomatic. Anybody that, does anybody have, um, I don't think it's called sense motive anymore. Um, insight? Insight. Does anybody have insight? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Ah, right, there we go. Oh, hey, yeah, take it to the way. Yeah. Um... The By the way, <laughs> um, Saxon, the answer is very good. And you get that from a direction you did not know he was in. Okay, so since one of my druid abilities is enhance ability, can I cast that on someone as well? Um, it's not at will, it's an action, but did you read what it all does? Well, it says I can, if I touch a creature, 
and bestow upon a magical enhancement. And I can put one of these spells on someone. But then this one's like Eagle Splendor is the target has advantage on charisma checks. Or I have like intelligence checks, wisdom checks. Those are so all can, skills. Yeah, those that's something you can cast on anybody. It just takes an action. So that I can, So But it will take a what is a second level spell, so it will take a second level spell set. Okay. I'll use it this time since you got a level twenty. Brook, Saxon. Um yeah. He did say a couple things that spark you to think that he, they had shinies. Especially the whole trading thing. He seemed to wince a little bit more when he said rain and protection. Chloe, don't play with that right now, sweetheart. I was actually getting ready to ask him, uh, protection from what? Or who? Hold on one second. Trying to get Kayla to come and get Chloe. Um. He agrees. Um. Dark right. me. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I had to read what you were saying real quick. And what was what was it specifically you said there? Uh, when he says that they would be willing to trade Chinese for protection, I want to specify protection from what or who. Protection from everything bad. Humans? Other goblins? The weather? <laughs> the sea has been angry. But not anymore. Not since we paid. Paid who? Paid, paid what? Paid Cheney's. To who? the protector. The yeah, who's that? Rain. Who's the protector? Uh, the, the great protector. That's what he told us to call him. Well, Did you call him the bringer of rain? Bringer of rain. Ah, oh, Jesus. We're fucked. What? We can't kill Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this protector? Like, where, where did you meet this guy? Oh, he came to us. Said he'd bring rain and protect us and bring peace. And he's done it. We just pay. Well, peace from who? He's left. Hmm? Peace from who? Who have you been fighting? Well, other goblins, humans. No, no war since he's been here. We all work together now, sort of. So, tribute. Can I do like a knowledge history or a knowledge religion on this protector that they're talking about? Yes. Uh, history would be probably, uh, or religion, do both. Okay. There are several gods that fall under the category of protector. However, you're not aware of any that are worshipped by goblins that are. So unless they have been introduced to a new de uh, deity, there is that. As for history, not in this area. Not that you're aware of. But you do know of several different... Uh, with your religion check, you do know of several different spells that can cause some of the effects he's talked about. Except for peace. That one just takes sheer force of will. <clears throat> Would I be able to tell... Uh, you said it wasn't like a deity kind of thing? It could have been a deity. Could it, was my divine sense do anything with that? Like, can I be able to sense that? Or you can cast no? divine sense, absolutely. Uh, what all does it find? Uh, hold on. I don't recall the ability right off the top of my head. I think Divine Sense more senses like undead and stuff, don't it? 
Uh, Celestial Fiend or Undead within 60 feet of you. Oh. <laughs> so it's probably not within 60 feet, probably. Probably not. <laughs> Alright, never mind then. How about, uh... I want to mention to, uh, whoever in the party that's close by, to buy me a little time, I'm gonna cast, uh, Detect Magic as a ritual. I need okay. ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yeah. <laughs> ten minutes on this? You need ten minutes? That is that is my plan. I'm gonna start the uh, start the ritual. And hey, okay, just give me a second. Then I have an idea. I just want to make sure I can pull it off. Matt. Yes. Can I uh, use? Uh, wait, are the three items that we're looking for are they magical at all? Yes. Can I? Uh, Uh, can I use the tech magic? You gonna cast it as an actual cast or as a ritual? Uh, what's the difference? Grok right now is getting ready to cast it as a ritual. It doesn't use a spell slot to cast it as a ritual. Oh, okay. It just takes ten minutes. So Grok is actually oh. out there. He's laying out like he's drawing symbols in the ground right now, and he's pulling <laughs> out some uh, little pieces of incense and. The goblins are just running do this? They're actually watch. Okay. A lot of the goblins are watching mesmerized. Even the chief keeps looking over at him with curiosity. Yeah, I'm standing there watching a mes mesmerized too. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck well, is he in his hand? If he's doing that, then I'll just wait then. Uh -huh. I mean, there's no point of two We're people. We're just going to sit that. here for ten minutes? <laughs> I guess so. Unless you, unless you got well, a better idea. You have we communication add? with your, your imp how far out, Saxon? Oh, God damn it. I'm on a different page. That's fine. I'm familiar. I think it's 100 yards. Could For telepathic? It was like that or if it was like within a mile or something. How about we ask him to give us a tour of his kingdom thing or whatever, the village. Can Oh, it's 100 feet, you can communicate telepathically. Okay. You know that your that, imp has left that range, yes. Okay. The uh, Goblin King in the back of his mind is gonna, gonna hear, he's just checking for curses. Huh? Huh? Curses? Who's cursing us? What? What? What Nobody. am I hearing? What? This guy's crazy. Whoa. Okay. Hey, piss. Where, where, where do we? Where can we get you? <laughs> what kind of shinies do you like? All shinies. Like a, all shinies. As anywhere you no curse. Head? No curse shinies. No, no, no. We don't like curses either. Why? Who? Who brought up curses? Why would you even bring I, that up? I think I'm cursed. I heard some voices. Uh. All right. Yeah. Where? Where can we get some shinies, though? The gods must have been talking to me again. Oh, yes. I am divinely blessed. <laughs> I bow down before him. <laughs> <laughs> I love goblins. <laughs> He's like... <clears throat> but talking of curses... Well, he, he, should, he should check. Make sure no curses. No curses. No, no, well, you're... No, no, no such thing as that, no. Why would Chinese be cursed? Well, is Are you asking some... us? He, when, you, when you speak, he kind of looks at you. Your voice sounds familiar. Yes. Well, there's a chance that somebody might not want you to touch their items, especially shinies. Well, we don't have many shinies right now. Most were given to the protector, so if they're cursed, they're his problem. <laughs> Smart for us. But did you touch them? 
yes. Well? But curse stay with you, right? We gave way. They're gone. No curse. Nope. Well, we'll see. That's not how it works, Tiff. Curse check. <laughs> and a couple of the goblins get up and start running off towards the cave. Dang it, we should have went to the cave. Uh -oh. so I, I, I know this. this uh this this uh sword, it was like really shiny, uh over in the city earlier. Someone said that was cursed. And man, that, that curse stayed with everyone that touched it. <laughs> It was super shiny. Have you seen it? Piece of... Um... I hope he didn't touch yeah. it. That's the, one of the worst curses out there. Yeah. How do we get rid of curses? Well, you, you've got to get the back and remove curses from it. We can do that. Actually, uh, that's what we... this. That's what he specializes in. Would you like some help with this? Is is this a is this something you've you've, you've touched the sword? Maybe cursed. Maybe cursed. Just a tip. Just just a, just a tip. Yeah, that's <laughs> what they always say. Um. Um. How? If 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 the item's gone, how how do you get rid of the curse? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, my my buddy would, back would there. It, would it help if we give you all the roots you Ooh. want? Would that work? Good act for good. No, good good totally act. Get rid of curse. You take roots. Well, if we could get our hands on the sword, we could remove the curse. I curse is a sword. It would remove it from you. Sir, the sword is gone. Protector has the sword. Well, where is this protector? We need to go get the sword so we can save you. He lives in the cave. But be very careful. Only, only talk to protector if you have tribute. All right. Protector can you tell us very, about him? Very powerful. He brings what rain. He, he protects. What does he look like? Uh, you? No. You? No. Um, Me? Are you sure it's not the Human? With hair like his. He points to the bull. Ah. Interesting. Kind of. Commands. How far, how far away is that cave? It's about a, a little less than a quarter mile. Oh, never mind. You can see a couple goblins that took off. They're actually rounding the corner into it right now already. And you got another three minutes left on your ritual casting. Grok is sitting there. He's chanting now. Um... So, Umang Wake like I just said. And one more! Goblins running into that cave are probably going to get killed. If you, what if kind you, of tribute would we need to bring? Um, shinies. Or allegiance. <laughs> shinies or allegiances. Those are what he takes. Okay. Take away curse with. I do. I, I'll. If you as many roots as you want, take away curse, please. How willing would he be to part with his sword? Uh, protector doesn't part with anything. Shit. <laughs> this is not the greatest shiny in the world. No, this is just the tribute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoa, whoa. We'll, we'll take this curse away from you, but we're going to need some shinies. It takes shinies to take curses from shinies, obviously. I mean, yeah, that's how it works. He reaches underneath the fur like he's sitting on, and he pulls out a silver plate. That's ah, shiny. I'll take it. I just start walking towards the cave. <laughs> Probably smells like ass. <laughs> He's farted on it a few times, clearly. <laughs>
He seems very paranoid. He starts mm -hmm. chittering to the others in, uh, in Goblin speech. Um, Gruck is still in the middle of casting his spell as this is going on. By the way, I put an actual 10 minute timer. So, he's still, he's casting a spell. Coming close to completion as you receive the plate. From, from where we're at, do we have a better vantage point on the cave? Yes. You can see the can entrance, I... and there is clearly the little uh, makeshift thing above it that is like a watchtower above it. There's two goblins up there with crossbows and spears. At, at the, the cave entrance? Yes. Can we can we tell Piss to uh, get his goblins away from there? Well, they no attack unless you threaten. Yeah, but they're going to be cursed as well. Oh, the whole village is cursed from what you're saying anyway. We all yeah. shiny. You gotta help us get that sword back, though. I don't you talk to I can't go talk to protect. You talk to protector. We we could talk to him, but your goblins, you, your buddies need to be away from us. Uh, they can't. Uh, uh, uh. Protectors say they stay there. They stay there. All right. Well, it's not my fault when you fall dead. You know. All right. The oh, peons. <laughs> By the way, you have finished casting your spell at this point. Uh, well, I mean, I just wanted to examine the uh, the goblins to see if there were any magical effects on them. Okay. It is a concentration, correct? Yes. Okay. I think. For a minute, be. I believe. Or is it ten minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Nice. All right, well, here and in the village... There is no large amounts of magical radiation or radiating auras or whatever you want to call it. The only type of magic radiating at all is actually from your group as individuals uh, being able to tell that you have the ability to cast spells for at least four of your five characters. The Goblin King, the Goblin Chieftain, whatever you want to call him, has a very, very, very faint aura of magic, but he is not able to cast, but looks like he has the ability to if he worked at it. Not what I, not what I was expecting. <laughs> well, you can maintain that, if you wish. I, I would, and I'm going to start, like, walking around the village, just kind of randomly looking around to see if I uh, run across any traces of magic. There is one hut that does radiate with quite a bit of magic. However, as you're getting closer, you realize that it's mostly natural magics, uh, religious magics, and you're fairly positive, given the auras of it, it's probably the shaman's tent. It's on the way to the cave, though. So you know. Well, due to the fact that I was in uh, trance while uh, uh, casting of this uh, ritual, how much of ambient conversation did I manage to hear and retain? A decent amount of it. Uh, at least the, the theme, the subject matters, maybe not finite details. Are we, are we gonna make our way over there, guys? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, let's head down to the cave. I will agree, and I would like to uh, look at the uh, the chieftain and just mention to him that I am sensing uh, a great magical aura that is currently on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh <-huh. clears throat> Wait, Saxon, was that all that? Wait, wait. <laughs> was that all in character? 
Maybe. I'm really hoping it was. Because you just sound batshit crazy when you do. So, so, so far we know there's a human over there that's probably got our shinies that we need. What do you... We don't see any anyone in the cave right now, do we? You said there's just some smoke coming up from it? There is some smoke coming out from it. Uh, very faint smoke coming out from it. There is a, almost a crackling in the air, uh, like static electricity type thing as you're getting closer. You can feel your hair standing a little bit on edge as you're approaching the cave entrance, which right now is down. Uh, it is uh, The water is down. You can go in there uh, in dry, on dry points. As you're approaching the entrance, so you can hear uh, the sound of a guttural, like, <coughs> sound, and a low. I said those goblins were going to get killed. Yeah, they, they are dead. <laughs> they are dead, Michelle. If we hurry, we might be able to help them. You, you guys think we yeah. can get this uh, goblin this guy to uh, get the protector out here? I don't think I like so, going into this cave that he uh, dwells in. So, so Matt, just so I don't have to actually whisper every single person in the party, can I say this out loud and have it be telepathically to, the, to their heads. Yes, just say who it is first and then go through. Like, which order are you telling them in? Uh, Yana Noli, Vol, Tom, Gruck, because that's the order that it's on my bar down here. Okay. So Stay you guys calm. in that order will hear this. And it's probably verbatim to everybody. Stay calm. You don't know this yet, but there's a fucking dragon in that cave. <laughs> That's why I stammered a little back then. Back then. So as, as, as people in the party stop, each person stops individually when they hear this, Gruck just is like, going to go help the goblins. <laughs> Till you finally hear this, what would be probably about 12 to 15 seconds after the first person did. After I started screaming. Well, you could always stop when Yana Noli starts screaming. That, that's well, I mean, I suppose, I, like, I would. I would stop and look. And then at that point, I would probably notice the, uh, the gap that has been established between me and the rest of the group. And assuming that that's when I hear... Uh, Saxton in my head, then that gap is going to decrease quickly. <laughs> As you move back over there, yes. All right. Uh, everybody, give me a knowledge or king check upon hearing uh, dragon. Knowledge. All right. It, Ten plus gets you. Uh, okay, five plus gets you this one. So, uh, Tom, you will know this. Dragons haven't been seen in over a century. Everybody else, uh, the dragons disappeared during the great calamity of the uh, the world splitting. None have been seen or heard from since then. There are extreme rumors of great worms that are still left on mountaintops deep within the inland areas, but nobody has seen them or heard them or talked to them since the split of the land over a century ago. Do, do we know who said this? Like, do we know that Saxon said this? It's in my voice. You, you can okay. hear his voice in your, your It's just telepathically, it's in your head, so nobody else can hear it but you. Are it's we, almost uh, like you hear him talking. So, like, when you're screaming, you're assuming everybody else heard it until you realize his lips weren't moving. So that's also kind of freaky on itself. Are we far enough away from the other goblins to talk about this? Uh, the goblin, two goblins above you, um, 
basically, because you're a, a little bit of ways uh, from the cave entrance. That's about the only ones near you. Wait a minute. Let's see if I can get this thing to load a little faster this stuff. All right, I look, I look back at uh, Saxon and just. What do you, what do you mean? I have it again. This would be telepathically. I have it on good authority. There's a fucking dragon in that cave. What? What? What authority? What do you mean, dragon? By the way, you hear Warwick say, ha, I have authority, <laughs> when you say that, in your head. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, hang on, I'm trying to, give me two seconds, I'm going to reread something, just to see if it'll work the way I want it to. Uh, if for no other reason than the, uh, the tech magic that I had running earlier, would I be aware of the fact that Saxon has cast... Um, find familiar? Oh yeah, you're aware of his familiar. Then you I'm going to look at him and be like... Sense, you can sense the uh, conjuration magic moving around in a small, tiny form uh, about half the height of Thorn. Moving around and communicating back and forth. I'm going to directly ask, ask Saxon if uh, he sent something in there to take a look. Yes. And... <clears throat> For the record, you guys can talk back to me. In in head, yeah. You oh. don't need to speak out loud. Oh, okay. That's what I was trying to make sure I had. I had it read properly. Dude, I'm gonna. I know the perfect magic Dude, item for you. Me? Yeah, I'm gonna have to make a magic item for you that allows you to link up to more people at once. That would be fucking sweet, wouldn't it? Like, I, I can only do it to one of you at a time, but I can, we can communicate telepathically. Uh, is that how, uh, are, are you saying we shouldn't go in here? I'm saying we should be aware of what we're about to face. Is this like a big, scary, bite your head off kind of thing, or is this it's like bigger a... bigger than we are, but it's smaller than a horse. It sounds like it's a young dragon. We can probably take it, but we need it to be aware that you know, so we don't like walk in and go, "Holy shit!" All right, all right. I already pooped my pants, so let's just keep going. Gross. <laughs> uh -huh. Probably uh, once everybody's like ready to go, then I'm going to cast a shield of faith on myself, okay. so that it's active. Okay, but that will kill your um... detect magic. Just so you know. Yep. Hey, Matt? Yes. Can we take a five minute or can I disappear for five minutes? Yes. My we sister can... just called me. Yeah, go ahead. We can take a five minute break if everybody wants to yeah. you know, step out, use the restroom. Sure. Do note that we have say... to be done a little earlier today, by the way, guys. Um, we have about an hour left in game. Okay. So. I guess what do, what, do we, what do we know about dragons? Is there anything. So you said they disappeared like a century ago. Do we know kind of what to be aware of on them? Oh, um, they were considered the most powerful creatures. Uh, they their power was said when unified all the dragons power could take on the gods themselves. They are known as uh, fearsome creatures that are extraordinarily powerful. Uh, they also have a natural enemy in giants. Giants and dragons have never gotten along. Okay. I don't. I feel like it might also be be interesting to note the way they were talking about this uh, dragon, calling it a uh, protector. Chances are, when we when we engage it, either while we're fighting it or afterwards, the goblins might very well attack us. Didn't he say it was a human? That's what the uh, goblin said. That's the first time you Is, do, do, do we know of any magic that can turn a person into a dragon or vice versa? Polymorph. But that's a very high level spell. 
Or if it was can also make your can change your appearance, but doesn't change things that radically. All right. Well, have I officially cast Shield of Faith at this point? Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Shield of Faith doesn't take that long to uh, cast. Okay. I was just checking. Uh oh. Because now I'm curious. Curious how so? Hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm trying to say something for the past five minutes. <laughs> if the Goblin Chief was talking about it being a human and there's a dragon in there, then it's either not the protector that he's talking about, which doesn't make sense because that's where his shinies would likely go. And didn't they say that the protector was in the cave or the shinies were in the cave? One of the yes. two? Yeah. Yes, How big is the cave? Do we know? Well, I haven't been in it yet, so no. But, uh, Pink's uh, familiar, though. What do you know? Uh... He would have been able to give some information. He didn't ask for that information, though. And he's dealing with a demon, so straight up, unless you ask specifically, it's not going to share. And Damn. it's not going to talk to you either, so... Uh, can I... Can I cast Detect Evil and Good? Uh, you could cast that if you would like. You yeah, can also dry. save it if you want to. There's not really... No real reason to cast it, no real reason to save it, so... Um... Right, so can I, so my, uh, ghost Unless you want to find out if it's a good or evil, I suppose. What's the range on it? Uh, 30 feet. You are not close enough. You're, you're 30 feet from the entrance. Oh, so. uh, okay, no. I'll wait. But it does last okay. for 10 minutes if I cast it. Okay. And what were you going to say, Thorn? My, uh, my ability to telepathically talk to people, does that work the same way as his? One yes. Percent? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay, so we're going down to this cave and we're, what, being escorted by two goblins or what? You're not being escorted. You guys are just walking down on your own. So we're just down there? Nobody's around us? But there's two goblins in a watchtower above the cave, right? Uh, there is two above the cave, correct. The thought that I was having earlier is because it's, uh, the uh, Goblin Chief was talking about a human, not a dragon that was a protector. I'm wondering if there isn't some sort of illusion spell at work. And it's not actually a dragon. Uh, give me a knowledge religion check. I'm thinking it's the other way around. Maybe uh, dragon took human form when yeah. dealing with the goblins. Yeah. I think it'd survive a lot longer. The um shoot, what were you what were you trying to figure out when I had you roll that knowledge religion? My mind just went completely blank. I was bringing up the uh, the idea of it not being a dragon, but a human that is casting okay. some form of religion spell. Um, I'd like to knowledge religion for the opposite. If it's a human, or if it's a dragon that might cast a human spell. <laughs> cast a human spell. You've never heard of anything of that sort happening, but you do know that ma uh, dragons are extremely magical. So, a shout. And you do know that, uh, you, you do, well, actually, you don't know what kind of cr creature he has, never mind. So that religion check I had you roll was worthless. Oh. Well, young and only, I cannot discount the possibility. You may very well be Do you want me to call you back later? Okay. Alright, we'll just, uh... Okay. Yeah, just let me know. Alright. Well, let me too. Okay. 
Oh. Welcome back. I'm still here. Just standing up for a second to throw on the light. You're good. So. So. All right. All right, so uh, would it be a good idea if I, like, turned into a spider and went and checked out the cave on the inside? I'd get a plus four to still. Well, he's saying he can send his imp in there, right? Or his, uh, his, his demon to check it out for us. Yeah, okay, as long as we get it checked out. This dragon. That's it. It's the safest way to get this checked out. Well, I'm guessing he, he, I think he already did, so it's just a, it's a matter of relaying information, I think, at this point. Yeah. What, uh, what exactly was the inside of the cave like? Uh, went back a long ways. About 100 feet. Uphill. At the end. Uh, in there, sitting, uh, uh, creature. Looked human. I saw past it. Um, not its true form. I could smell it. It's a dragon. I will relay said information in turn. That's good to know. Was there a lot of shinies? <laughs> yeah, if you on three chests, three large chests, closed, couldn't see them. Again, I think we should lure him out. I don't, I don't like the idea of going a hundred feet into a cave, into a dragon's lair. Any idea on how we would do that? Making a lot Push. of notes. <laughs> Put some shiny outside of the cave. Dragon smell shinies. Does, yeah. does anybody have extra shinies on them? Uh, I have this plate. <laughs> I have coins. Hey. Yeah, I can. I can drop what few coin I have on. Uh, on the plate and stick it in front of the uh, cave entrance. Yeah, I can put up some coin too. I got. I can do three gold pieces. And I thought I was poor. I got five. <laughs> Welcome to first couple levels. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I have two silver. Uh, I can spare some silver. What's around that the dragon eats? What kind of like, or animals? Nobody's seen them in a long time. Legend says anything they want. Uh, they consume... Depending on the legend you look at, uh, the most common ones say they eat bad little children. Um, <laughs> but uh, for some reason, you guys are pretty sure that area? was not actually true. Are there animals in this area? There are some. You do just hear him massacre a couple goblins. Can we ask the yeah. goblins up here in this uh, watchtower how we address this protector, or how we get him uh, an audience with him? Approach. Gold front. Go in front? Oh, we're, gold. we're here. Gold in gold front. Yep, yep. This is what we've done. Do we have to say it? Password? Carry it to him. Will he come out, or will, do we have to go in? Only if he wants to come out. Only once to bring rain. Oh, he's a water dragon. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. They, they did say he was watery. Or brings water. He's a waterbender. <laughs> Can we just scream or yell into the cave? Oh, great protector! We've got you tribute! Do we hear anything? See anything? I'm hiding behind a rock, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um. The. Okay, first off. 
What does anybody speak draconic? No. Nope. I do not. No. I speak celestial and common. You will hear back More Sana San Poreskan Monde. Thank you, that. I think it means go in. I think that's something, <laughs> yes. Ah. Well, Rick, did you understand that? I have no idea. That's a good question. Let me see it. I don't think he does. I don't know what languages imps speak. I'm going to probably go with the answer. Infernal and scary. The answer is no. What? How about the goblins? Okay, it's no. Can we ask the goblins? Yeah, it's no. Oh, yeah. They don't know what he said. What? How do they speak to him? Oh, oh. Give him stuff. He does what needs to be done. Well, that's just stupid. <laughs> Welcome to goblins. <laughs> Alright, I say we smoke um, this guy out. Speaks it. <laughs> if we let him fire here. <laughs> Piss him off. There is fire coming out from inside there already. Smoke coming from outside the thing, remember? Oh, yeah. But if he's uh, a water... Create water? You don't have it? I, I, no, I don't. I think he creates water anyways. I don't think, I don't think that's going to help us out very much. Well, uh, where's the fire coming from? If he oh, man. Water? I have one idea, but I can't say it because my character's not that kind of guy. <laughs> don't you hate when that happens? Yeah. Does anybody have any dragon repellent? I got shark repellent. It was a nice I'm, I, I think I'm yeah. faster than before. That's all I need. I like your logic. I don't need to be faster than the dragon. I just need to be faster than one of you. I can outrun <laughs> goblins. <laughs> That's true. You can outrun Thorn pretty easy, too, unless he shapeshifts. Can we uh, can we grab one of the guns and kind of just say, hey, yeah, that's going to work really well there. for us trying to not fight these goblins. Grab one, use them as a shield. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not, they're not going to know we're using them as a shield until the time uh, comes. By then, no one's going to know. You have to climb up there to flying. get them. They're about fifty feet above you. Hey, hey, you goblin! Uh, Piss told. Uh, he said that we needed to get you to bring our stuff in here to bring to the protector. He said you're the, you're the best carrier we got. Mm, best carrier went in there just a minute ago. He's not coming out. <laughs> and that, that means you're now the best carrier. Mm, don't know you. Your choice. You go in. Crap. You can see him visibly shaking as he's trying to get out of going in there. I'll give you some shiny. If, if he's your protector, why are you afraid of him? Oh, scary. Go meet him, you'll see. Okay, this is OOC, but it's a small dragon. I mean, how high of a challenge rating could it really be? <laughs> All I know is on my other campaign, my guy just got killed by a dragon. <laughs> so I'm uh, 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 rolling. <laughs> so, 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 I you will have experience rolling up a new character. That I have <laughs> never been more encouraged to charge into it. Also I known as a young dragon one shotted my whole party in one breath. So let's go. I start walking in with the shiny plate. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, in my past life, this guy. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm in. Exactly. Right, I'm gonna, hard. I'm gonna wild shape into a spider and crawl along the ceiling right. above them. So you crawl up along the ceiling, watching with your thousands of little eyes, watching right. everything that's going on. I'm you bringing guys... the plate with the uh, the coin. Tight, tight grip on my shield. Mm. Tight grip. Tight grip on your shield. <laughs> You guys will go back, the cave curves to the right as you're going, and then slowly goes uphill, and at the end of the top, you will see, carved out of the stone itself, a large throne. 
And on the throne is sitting a very relaxed looking individual. Um, there's three chests around him, but he's wearing actually very fine clothing that is white and blue. He Can I has cast, uh... very pale, uh, very, not pale skin, like kind of tanned, healthy skin, but he has blue hair that is slicked back. He is holding himself I... with quite a bit of air of confidence. Can I uh, detect evil and good? Uh, you sure can. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Can I hold up a lead plate? That won't help you. No. Okay, so you cast evil and good. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. You don't detect yourself. Thorn, what alignment are you? Are you good or evil? Oh, I'm good. Okay, so he's good. Uh, you'll detect that Gruck is good. Yananoli is... Chaotic neutral. So nothing. And um, Saxon is evil. The guy sitting on the throne is also evil. Alrighty then. And he, he looks at you all. <laughs> he reaches over to the side and he pulls out a helmet. And he slides it on his head. And as he starts to speak, you all understand him now uh, perfectly. There is no need for tribute from those of you that actually stand in front of me with some actual skill and power. I like this guy. <laughs> How nice! I can keep this? Wait, Oops. those of you? You are not goblins. And I am assuming you, good tiefling, are the one that had the little scamp coming in here and looking. Uh, I'm just checking the place jig, out. What's jigs up, up guys. Jigs I up. would do the same. I would do the same, absolutely. And keep those things. You can score a little bit of... Mm, coin for them. I assume you're here for some of the things I have acquired. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. I knew it was only a matter of time. So, what are you looking for? <clears throat> I get jigs up all talent. A few items that uh, we were... <laughs> Don't to keep an eye out for? Well, I have many, many items here. It just depends on what you're looking for. Are you supposed to retrieve it by any means necessary? I mean, they said try the diplomatic route. They said that with the goblins. And you we are no longer. You can take me. We are no longer feeling. See, I'm way. not really hoping to try. That's good because I don't really want you to. While I am positive I'd win, I would be gravely wounded. And even if I did lose, I would still kill most of you before you were able to take me down. I don't see that as being a very wise action on either one of our parts to raise weapons at this point. So you're saying we can uh, we can talk this out? I think we can come to an arrangement of sorts. You okay. see, I already have plenty of mm, creatures to do my will. Um, quick question. Not that I want to cut you off. Ooh. I don't want to cut you off, but uh, and uh, this is me talking to you, Matt. Okay. Um, can I run a, an insight on just how confident is he that he can take us as a group? Yeah, go ahead and roll it. <laughs> Vol must have been trying to talk. I'm going to wait till he's back. But you are... You are... You're sensing that it's somewhere between those two scenarios. With his actual confidence with it. So we can probably take a couple of us down at least. Yeah. Okay. Can I 
Can I just throw this out there? Our job was to get it back. There's nothing beyond that that says you couldn't steal it again. Hmm. And technically, we're off the hook then. That's true. Good point. It will so be very why, hard I... to steal things without this level of diversion. I don't know which items you wish, but the items are inconsequential to me. What they can get me is what matters. Ask him what he wants. I'm not happy to tell my squad to ask him what he wants. Yeah, why, why, why would you want to work with us? What, what's, what's your angle here? You see, being of a different race than what is commonly accepted, and in fact most people think we are dead, it's hard to get into society without somebody to vouch for you. That's what I am seeking for. I will okay. give you what you need. Take me back to town. Tell them I'm down that, with that I have done what I have. I have done things to help you. Negotiated peace with the goblins and helped you retrieve the items. You, of course, were. I needed your help beyond. It was mostly your doing, but tell them of the good works I have done. Help them we... to trust me there in the city. If we decline? Well, then you're either, either leaving without items, or you're leaving with bloodshed, either from me or you. You know, I kind of like his idea. We already I like his idea, too. What, what's your name, buddy? My name... Hold on a second. Like a... Zarat. Zarat. So what, what kind of good things have you done, just out of curiosity? The goblins have not attacked in a while, have they not? I have ba uh, gathered up all the goblins together. They're working as one tribe now, mostly, under my supervision. They're not fighting each other, they're not fighting the city. And I've retrieved these items that the goblins have so greedily taken from the city. To make sure they're returned to their rightful owners. Well, that would definitely help you get welcomed by the city. I need to run another insight on that statement. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, Grapple <I> got it. <laughs> I personally don't care if he's telling the truth. I think it's a great idea. It gets us what we want, he gets what he wants. We're not really responsible past that. Are you rolling an insight as well, uh, Jan and Lily, before I answer? Yeah, yeah might as well, but... Okay. Can you guys hear me? I'm not yes. very bright. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you, Vol. Okay. Uh, Jan and Oli, he seems pretty legit about it. Brooke, yeah, is. you're pretty sure he told the goblins to steal the items. Like, you just... Something about the gleam in his eye says he's pulling more strings at this whole thing than you originally than he's letting on. I'm going to look at him. How exactly is it that you were controlling these goblins? When the mind is simple, it is quite an easy task. They want yeah, rain. How we... I bring them rain. They want protection. The sea has stopped swallowing them, which is just getting them to stop trying to swim. It, it does not take much when the intelligence is low to convince them that you are greater than you are. Why do you want access to the city? Well, I wish to create an empire for myself. It is boring living alone as a dragon. I... I wish to actually interact with the lands, with the people. More intelligent people? What kind I of interaction are you thinking of? Well, I'm not totally sure yet. This is my first adventure into human lands. I'm. Do you, do you intend to control the people in the city the way you have these goblins? 
well, I would not say it is out of the realm of possibility. But to what end? I don't <clears throat> plan on controlling people to this degree. I doubt humans are that stupid. You'd be surprised. Well, then those will probably be the ones that are easily controlled. And to what ends, I have not a clue yet. I don't know, guys. I, I think I, we should go with it. And I don't, yeah. I don't know if it really matters what the ends are. Although I do not tend, no. tend to murder or anything of that nature, if that is your concern. Like, again, I'm, guys, I'm totally in with this. He gets yeah. what he wants, we get, we get what we want, everybody's happy, and then past that, our responsibility ends, so... so we, could be, we could be starting something that would have disastrous effects in this city that we can't take back. I'm cool with that. Not our problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. The city that arrested us? <laughs> Greg's yeah. sitting here going, I'm playing the wrong character. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, they, they didn't really tell us everything that they were looking for. Uh, he said there's just a bunch of items that they needed. Um, he, he said bring everything back and they'd let us know. He mentioned something about a couple swords, a shield, uh, a pole arm, I think, uh, a book, a, a tiara, a helmet, something like that. Do you have any of those items with you? I... yes. <laughs> He leans over, and he opens up one of the chests, and he pulls out, uh, reaches into the chest, which is only about this big, by the way, and he pulls out straight out of it uh, the sword, so it's obviously deeper than what it actually looks like. It is spectacular, <laughs> immediately. Oh my god, it's the it. TARDIS. <laughs> and he will put that down, I'm sure that is one of the items. He pulls out a book, though I would love to read this. I'm sure this is very valuable to whichever mage it came from. And I'm assuming this item that allows you to speak, communi communicate directly with, uh, cannot tell which one, but a deity. I am assuming are the items that they are seeking. Uh, how is it you know what items we've been sent to collect? Those are the most valuable items in here. The rest of the things. Ordinary men could afford with a bit of savings. These things are the only things that those upon the hill would be able to afford. So if you want us to vouch for you, I gotta be honest, we gotta get something good out of this too. Well, that is, uh, that is something we can work out, yes. Um, and with this as well, though, I would require your silence about my true nature. Absolutely. He's looking at you. That. He looks at you, Rook. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> he looks up at the spider. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, exactly. so then I jump down and turn into my normal form and I tell him that, yeah. I'll vouch for Very well. Then, uh, you like... may, with the exception of the Helm I am wearing currently as I require it till I have learned your tongue. You may have any one item each of my wares. He op he just snaps and all the chests open up. Things just pop out, Diablo style? <laughs> Not quite Diablo <laughs> style, but they open up and he motions for you guys to come up and take a look. The items you will see on the insides of these chests of holding will be, uh, there is, uh, I'll just go through and give you small descriptions really quickly. There is a brooch that looks like it is a shield, uh, in the shape of a shield. There is a bag that has on the outside, uh, the suits from cards on it. it has a heart, a spade, a club, so on, so on. There is a ring that has a, uh, rabbit on it that looks like it is jumping engraved onto it there is a pair of bracers that have embossed into the back side of them arrows something happened oh thorn dropped i'll wait for a second 
Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, can I ask to seek alliance with him by doing this? That is what he's like. That's what he's hoping to accomplish by this. But, but I mean, like, without like, just, just not, not just the trip to town. Like, I want like a bond. Like, I want forever alliance. I think his phone died. Are you asking for marriage? She just no. asked for babies. <laughs> I just I would, someone with his power would be a good ally. I would love to be able to strike an alliance. I have enough minions. What I need is partners and ventures. So yes, I think I would be more than willing to. Uh, seeing how we are working together now, it is possible to continue to working together this way in the future. By the way, he does speak with uh, and holds himself with a slight air of Provian uh, style. His clothing actually appears to be from Provia as well, by the way. Yep. Which is technically the country you're from. Alright, so I think Thorn... Um, I think his phone died, so it'll take a second. Um, <laughs> I'll come back to the items for the rest, the rest of the items for him. You will see two bags that you know for sure are bags of holding. And you will also find uh, a very nicely made mace, a very elaborately made club, and from one of that chest that was right next to him, you'll be able to pull out a very elaborate glaive. Um. So you may each choose. How many one bags of holding? There are two bags of holding. Now, do note, just as a reminder. That part of the agreement with this with the city was whatever items you retrieve, they are going to hold. And if they are not retrieved by the owner, after 30 days, they are yours. And OOC, what that means is I have a percentage chance for each one of these items on if they will be there at the end of the 30 days or not. And I will roll dice, and it will be random. So there's a chance you may end up with the item, there's a chance you may not. And we have to give everything back? You have to give everything back. Yes. Okay. Right. They are paying you for this as well, but this is just like a bonus if you guys get something. Okay. Uh, are the bracers and all that, are they magical items? All these, all the items are magical. Okay. Uh, I would say the bracers... In order to uh, in order to identify the items themselves, would I have to reactivate the, the tech magic? He he will tell you if you guys have real if you really want to know what they are. I'm yeah, just okay. you guys look and figure out the descriptions. Uh, I want to know about the bracers and the ring with the rabbit on it. The bracers improve your accuracy with a bow. I don't think that is something you seem no. like you need. Uh, the ring, however, it allows you to jump great distances, uh, much more than a normal human ever could, at will. The glaive? What, what about the glaive? It is just, I, I hate to say it this way, a mundane magical item um, just increases its own potency. Yeah, I'd like it. Very well. How about them? What's the uh, what's the what's the maze? Uh, once again, all those weapons are just more potent weapons, better hitting, better. They're magical weapons. Nothing special about them outside of that. I don't have very many things yet that are, except for the three things that you are clearly taking back, that are extremely powerful. These items are. As my father would put it, a dime a dozen. And the brooch? Uh, I believe that allows you to stop magic missiles. I believe they call it a uh, shielding brooch or something like that. I'll take the ring. I think I'll take the brooch. And so, in, in character, or. Uh, OC broach a shielding. Uh, while wearing this, you have resistance to force damage and immunity to the magic missile spell. 
Nice. It does require attunement, though. So if that's not something that you wanted. And uh, Vol, that is the Ring of Jumping. It allows you to, as a, bo as a bonus action, activate it, and it triples your jump. Sweet. How many items can you attune to at the same time? Three. I don't remember that. Three? Mm -hmm. Can you break it afterwards? Mm -hmm. It just should takes I, a short rest I... to do that. Did he say we can only take one item each or can we just yeah. collect everything? One item each. He does want to keep some things for his uh, build, start of his wealth. Alright, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the brooch back and uh, grab a bag of holding them. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, kind of interested in the bag of holding. All right, so two of the bags of holding. I'll take the glaive. And I'll have to ask later, later what the other one. The uh, other thing was a, a bag of tricks, in case you were wondering what it was. So. I figured it was something like that. Which is fun. What all does a bag of tricks do? I was just looking it up to let you know. Um, let's see. Oh, I gotta figure out which color it is. I'll roll that later. Uh, basically, the ordinary bag from either gray, rust, or tan cloth appears empty. Reaching inside the bag, however, reveals the presence of a small, fuzzy object. The bag weighs about half a pound, and you can use an action to pull the fuzzy object from the bag and throw it 20 feet. When the object lands, it transforms into a creature you determine by rolling the D8 consulting on the table. The creature vanishes at the next dawn when it is re or when it is reduced to zero hit points. The creature is friendly to you and is your companion, and it acts on your turn. Let's see. Uh, as a bonus action, you can command the creature to move. Um, you can, uh, such as even attacking enemies. In the absence of such orders, the creature will act as a fashion appropriate to its nature. Once three fuzzy objects have been pulled from the bag, the bag cannot be used again until the next dawn. That does sound pretty fun. <laughs> uh, well, like the gray bag, it could, and I, I would actually roll to see which one it was. Um, the gray bag could pull out a giant elk, a weasel, a boar. I, the, uh, the other ones can pull out like a mastiff or a lion or a brown bear or, or a tiger or a baboon, <laughs> jackal, All a giant right. weasel. I guess I'll go for the bag if no one else wants it. I can find a weapon eventually. You're like, that yeah, sounds not, like a lot of fun. I'm not even level 4 yet. That just sounds just like, like a... Throw a weapon! <laughs> yeah. I can throw three animals at people a day? I'm in. <laughs> you're like, pull it out. Please be a panther! <laughs> I want a panther. I can, just, a I can just imagine, like, being in school. Like, I'm bored. Let's cause a disruption, boss. <laughs> flying in the classroom. Alright, it is the gray bag of tricks. Gray. Okay, all right. I will make a chart for it, so that when you throw it, it will randomly roll which one it is. Perfect. So, do put that in your uh, items section, though, if you do want, uh, if that's the one you want. Because that, it's just, that's a fun item. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd rather have fun items right. than weapons any day. Uh, where do I put this? Uh, so just, uh, you know, if we're going to be making a, a deal with you or an agreement with you, um, and you mentioned already that you realize that we know your true nature, uh, can we see this true nature? Very well. He steps down, uh, and a couple steps away from the throne, and he transforms... Uh, into a magnificent blue dragon. He is, uh, on the smaller side, he is a medium size, so about the size of, like, uh, a very small horse type thing, or a mastiff sort, sort of in there, a large dog, um, a wolf type size. He, uh, but yeah, he has, uh, the magnificent blue scales with, uh, a nearly white, um, for his front scales and under his wings. However, he does still have the helmet on. It's kind of like <laughs> sitting slightly to the side now. So, and cool. he, he kind of looks around for a moment and then transforms back to the human. 
uh, very seamlessly. Uh, almost druidic style on how the shift goes. I have also so there... some other arts. Anywhere specific in the city you'd like to start your... Wherever you um, must turn in your quest, what... tell them of what I've done, and I will make my way from there. Uh, I hope to work my way up, actually become a little more influential, be it through just wealth or actual political power, but wealth to start off with. And if I am in need of help in the future, because there are some items I do wish to procure in the future, when I have built up my wealth well enough, would you be interested in searching these items for me? They will come oh, yeah. with substantial reward, of course. I don't want to treat you as minions, more as partners. Equal share. Yeah. You know, I could totally yeah. be in on this. <clears throat> I'm back, baby. All right. So, the item's just going to run through it real quick again. Uh, the two bags of holding have already been taken. There is a brooch of shielding, yeah, which... Sure basically makes you immune to magic missile. There is a mace, a club, and a glaive, which is a polearm, that are magical weapons. Uh, there is bracers of archery, which make you very good at ranged weapons, uh, bows and stuff like that. And that is it right now for the item choices. Unless you want to give him a chance at the bag of uh, tricks first. Yon and Oli. Who's that? Thorn. Oh, did, did you want that, Thorn? Wait, what is it? Bag of tricks. What it lets you do is you pull this little small fuzzy ball out of the bag and throw it, and it becomes an animal. Um, and it can become, like, anything from, like, a weasel to a panther or an elk, and it obeys your orders for a brief time. Um, that sounds like it's going to be cool to have, so yeah, I'll do that. You okay with that? I'll roll off for it, for against you. <laughs> you roll off against, against me? Because yeah. he wants that too. Basically, both roll like a d20. <laughs> both roll a d20, whoever rolls higher takes it, and loser has to choose a different item. Oh, yes. Alright, yeah, I'm going to Sorry, friend. So, taking this. <laughs> as long as somebody in the party has it, it's a fun item. Yeah. You can throw three of those balls a day, and then you have to wait till the next day. Maybe somebody will have it. Yeah, maybe someone. And there is a chance. Yeah, I should tell you that too. There is a chance that these items uh, might not be there because one of the things is with the you guys uh, you weren't here for the thing. With this mission, you're supposed to retrieve any items that you find that were stolen and turn them back into the uh, police when you get back into town. The three main items that you're looking for are going to be returned to the owners, and everything else will be held for 30 days. If they're not retrieved by their uh, owners, they become yours. So what that means is basically there is a percentage chance on each one of these things that they will be picked up or won't be picked up. Well, how do they know if I even have this thing? What if uh, you could try to hide it yourself if you'd like. Yeah, all right. But that will come with some deception checks and stuff like that as well. Don't worry, I'm prepared. Alright. <laughs> so. And it all is based on the dice. Also, do you, do you plan on coming over to the city anytime soon? Whatever your name was. I forgot where I wrote it down. Zora, the dragon? Yeah, the dragon guy. Zora. It's X Y R R A T. Zyra. Uh, yeah, do you, do you plan on coming to the city anytime soon? I plan on returning with you all if you have no issue with it. Oh, right now? I'm in. Isn't he right back with us? Yeah, that is what I wish. Yeah, I'm cool with that. 
Oh, okay. I, th- I thought you wanted us to go tell them before you came back. No, it would make more sense to return with the triumphant heroes you are. Sounds good to me. He but we, we, we detected you to be a dragon, apparently pretty simply. Uh, is shit going to go down if somebody else realizes you're a dragon? Demons have the uncanny knowledge and ability to see through illusions with ease. Uh, while it is not an illusion that I cast, I think the little bastard smelled me. I, I will take a bath, and I don't think anybody will have much of an issue. Uh, the only people I have to really worry about are high-level wizards that have true seeing. But right. I wanted to be forthcoming with you all. Like I said, I want partners, not minions. <laughs> <laughs> partnering with the villain of the story. <laughs> I'm totally okay with all of this. <laughs> ah, I'm liking this guy. Gruck is the one person like... Yep. <laughs> is, it, is, this considered, is this considered splitting the party? No. <laughs> Gruck has gone along with it so far. And none of the things are particularly evil, just potentially evil. <laughs> don't look good. So. But I also don't have a whole lot of choice at the moment. No, no, not really. But your character did have a shady bat pass, so it's probably hard for you to wrestle with this between wanting to uh, wanting to actually go along with this and wanting oh, to... Oh, it, so- it sounds like a good fucking time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So he will grab his helmet and will take time to gather a couple items from the chests. Mostly some extra shed, uh, pairs of clothing, some gold. He'll put it into a sack that he will sling over his shoulder. All right. Lead the way. Should we go oh. back to the village and tell him we? Took the curse away. Oh, no, I got to. He tilts his head like what? <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, uh, the goblins might not like you very much. Uh, yeah, it's this guy's fault. Looks at you, Saxon. Hi. Okay. One. It's funny. <laughs> Two, it got us all the information we wanted. So, yeah. So what did you tell and them? All we have to do is tell them the curse was lifted. And done. Done. You told them the items were cursed. Ooh. You and I, sir, I think we'll get along really, very well. Really paranoid about that. And it totally worked. I think we shall get along very well. Alright, lead me on. Let us stop by the Biss, and tell him that everything is fine and cleared up. Uh, you great. You have aided the great protector in releasing a curse that I did not even catch. You must be <laughs> deep powerful. I really like this guy. Also, roots. Can we grab a couple of those roots? Because oh yeah. <laughs> mm, very well. Yeah. Tell them that grab is your. What? Tell oh, them roots. we require uh, at least a sack for payment of releasing the curse. That should bring you mm, 300, 400 gold on the marketplace? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear this, dude. Can, can we Going over forward? to uh, this. And telling them the curse is lifted. And, uh... Oh! Thank you. Okay. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. The protector did too. Said you were going to give us some stuff. Give us oh. some sacks. Oh yeah, sacks of what? He the said root? two two sacks of those roots. Uh, no, is what it, it, worth two sacks. It, it, yeah, that's oh. what the protector said. I I don't I don't know. He might kill you. But that's what he the, said. The protector is standing there, just crossed arms, with this giant smile. Just 
Look at him. Look at that smile. That's a killing goblin smile. <laughs> we'll see. I, I'm gonna get along with all of these guys. <laughs> Grunk is thinking expert. about re-rolling right now. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong, John? I'm sorry, what? I said and you're sitting there thinking about re-rolling right now. <laughs> I mean, not, I'm not that far, but there's definitely a conflict of interest. <laughs> and it'll be interesting to resolve it, or however it happens. All right. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not, like, personally opposed to the fact that they're extorting the hell out of these goblins. Like, I'm not, I'm not really <laughs> offended by that. I mean, if you're really offended, we could just give you a cut of the first sack. <laughs> Gives me a cut of the first that, one. That was already a lie. Is, is there a particular reason of why I wouldn't get an equal cut compared to everybody else? Because, because you feel you're so mad strongly about against us it. extorting the goblins. <laughs> I just said that I'm not really offended by you extorting the goblins. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, everybody's good. Yeah, two sacks. All right. So <laughs> it was a wicked bad curse. It was. Uh, I'll see what yeah, I can you, do. Yeah, you you were this close to death. <laughs> It'll be a few minutes. Thanks, bro. Do you, do you play any music? <laughs> the protector's not pleased with this time. Nobody plays music? Okay, we'll sit here. We're bored. <laughs> Anyway, time passes very uh, slowly, <laughs> as um, night has faded completely. Um, it is very dark by this point. It will be about an hour, and some goblins will come back and uh, two sacks. He holds out two sacks. Uh, give me a perception check and an insight check. Everyone or what? Everyone. We're probably getting some Jude on this. Oh, uh, inside it at least. <laughs> Alright, actually, Saxon, you... Let's see, what was, it? what was that? Saxon and Thorn, you two realize that, first off, they are not completely full. They're about roughly three quarters full each, maybe a little bit past that. Still worth some money, I guess. And my my insight on his, uh, I guess his face as he's handing us these sacks. Um, hoping you'll just leave <laughs> is really the best way to describe it. The <laughs> uh, you've overstayed your welcome. Get the hell out of my house. Look. But still That's trying nice. to be nice. Look over to to the protector and say, "Do your thing." <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, all I'm I'm Tell everybody that they're not. Full. No, I'll just step up and say, "These aren't full." I'll tell the goblin, "These aren't full." That's all we have. We said full. Yeah, it's we can make it work, guys. Right, How about some ale? You have any ale? That'll 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 make the difference. Uh, no. No ale. Um. What do you drink around here? Seawater. This. <laughs> oh, great. Piss from Biss. <laughs> this is piss. Dude, that would make a really good name for a uh, ale. We should start it. <laughs> Biss is piss. piss. <laughs> Just make some cheap, Ge cheap ass ale for it, gentlemen. Surely we've collected all we need to. Yeah, I'm kind of. I I got almost side on this one. All right, I'll back. I'm cool. Let's let's get that. Right. So they will give you those two, and a sigh of relief as you guys all leave the village and head back to your ship. Which two of the sailors, or the captain, one of the sailors, rather. Go ahead and roleplay that, <laughs> Saxon. 
No, no, no. Just as I'm leaving, that's in his head. Okay. Oh, got it, got it, in his head. Got it. So, we're like, oh. Um, But yeah, when you guys get back to the ship, the captain of one of the sailors is asleep. The other one is on watch, watching as you guys approach. And he will rouse the other two and uh, as you approach and climb onto the ship. The uh, new companion of yours, Zai, that's what I'm just going to call him for short, walks over there and he does just... He cast Prestidigitation. It's clearly Prestidigitation for anybody that knows spellcasting. So, in other words, Yananoli, you don't have a clue. But he casts something, <laughs> and he does it, and then floats off the ground, and just floats over to the, um, to the ship. <laughs> that shit just happened? Did, 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 did anybody else just see this shit? No? No? Alright, I'll Dude, just keep walking. That keep was... Up. I'm just going to kind of chuckle to myself and walk onto the boat. <laughs> Lazy. You didn't want to get wet. <laughs> Even though he's a water dragon? Even though he's a water dragon. <laughs> he's wearing fine clothing right now. He doesn't want to get that ruined. <laughs> hey, Capitan! We have a buddy here. You, you cool with taking another person back? As long as he doesn't try to slit my throat, I have no problem with it. Right, well, then. he tried. He, he helped us. Golden Brown, no. Yeah, we got your shit. Golden Brown. Yeah, a friend of yours is a friend of mine, I suppose. Let's get going. I want to go to my own bed. Alright. Alright. And. He will. Oh, that's nice. Uh, he will. Uh, they will cast off, and you guys will start sailing back. It does take a while to sail back. It is well after dawn by the time you guys return. You guys are getting very nocturnal in your sleeping habits. <laughs> and yeah, I know what that's like. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you guys will be approaching the dock just at about dawn? About 30 minutes after. And that is where we will stop this week. Since it is almost 8.30. 6.30. Yeah. Alright, well. Yananoli has to go, so. Yeah. That's, That's okay. cool. I'm gonna go eat and get ready for it. I will see you guys next week. Yep. See you guys. Right. Until next week, see guys. you guys next week, and... Yeah. We'll Glad see you dragon. And you guys have befriended a dragon. And did it diplomatically. Yeah. yeah that's that's because we're awesome. No I was that. I was actually, like, I'm sitting here going, man, I had plans in case you guys attacked the goblins, or in case you attacked him. Like, oh, oh see, you guys probably could have taken him. At least one of you probably would have died, though. Oh, yeah. He's only, like, not even horse-sized. Yeah, probably but take... he, he is... He is slightly augmented from a normal blue dragon. Oh. So. Can we ride him? <laughs> you can try. We'll, we'll have to find that in a future episode. <laughs> Same blame. All right, guys. It is an easy way to find out. All right. There's all always right. an easy way to find Bye. out. Take care. Later, all. Have a good one. Until next week.